an overview of the ELF, Gwent Towers, and HARP interconnection, HARP, ELF generation, and mass mind control. We are the ELF generation. Since birth, we have been inundated by external electrical sources. Most sources of electromagnetic radiation are benign, having little effect on the human body. However great concern should be given to lower spectrum as research has shown ULF, ELF, and VLF radio signals can negatively influence your health. Couple that with possible military intentions to control the minds of an unwary populace using low frequency technology and you get our present conundrum. Extremely low frequency, ELF, waves. ELF waves up to 100 Hz are once more naturally occurring, but they can also be produced artificially, such as for the Navy's Project Sanguine for submarine communication. ELF waves are not normally noticed by the unaided senses, yet their resonant effect upon the human body has been connected to both physiological disorders and emotional distortion. Infrasound vibration up to 20 Hz, can subliminally influence brain activity to align itself to delta, theta, alpha, or beta wave patterns, inclining an audience toward everything from alertness to passivity. Infrasound could be used tactically, as ELF waves endure for great distances, and it could be used in conjunction with media broadcasts as well. The Russian parliament acknowledges the conspiracy theorist story that HARP can affect your minds. Title, Russian parliament concerned about US plans to develop new weapon document number, FBI's soft 2002 document date, the 8th of August 2002 Division, Russia, North America Subdivision, Russia, United States Source Line. SEP 2002080000087 Moscow Interfax in English 1009 GMT 8 August 2nd City Source, Moscow Interfax Language, English, FBI's Transcribed Text, Moscow, August 8. Interfax, the Russian State Duma has expressed concern about the United States program to develop a qualitatively new type of weapon. Under the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program HARP, the US is creating new integral geophysical weapons that may influence the near-Earth medium with high-frequency radio waves, the State Duma said in an appeal circulated on Thursday. The significance of this qualitative leap could be compared to the transition from cold steel to firearms, or from conventional weapons to nuclear weapons. This new type of weapons differs from previous types in that the near-Earth medium becomes at once an object of direct influence and its component. These conclusions were made by the Commission of the State Duma's International Affairs and Defense Committees. The statement reads, The committees reported that the US is planning to test three facilities of this kind. One of them is located on the military testing ground in Alaska and its full-scale tests are to begin in early 2003. The second one is in Greenland and the third one in Norway. When these facilities are launched into space from Norway, Alsaka and Greenland, a closed contour will be created with a truly fantastic integral potential for influencing the near-Earth medium, the state Duma said. The US plans to carry out large-scale scientific experiments, under the HARP program, and not controlled by the global community, will create weapons capable of breaking radio communication lines and equipment installed on spaceships and rockets, provoke serious accidents in electricity networks and in oil and gas pipelines and have a negative impact on the mental health of people populating entire regions. The deputies said. They demanded that an international ban be put on such large-scale geophysical experiments. The appeal, signed by 90 deputies, has been sent to President Vladimir Putin, to the United Nations and other international organizations.
to the parliaments and leaders of the UN member countries, to the scientific public and to mass media outlets. Among those who signed the appeal are Tatiana Strakankina, Nikolai Karitanov, Yega Ligeka, Sergei Ryshelsky, Vitaly Shevastyanov, Viktor Chirupkov, Valentin Zorkultsev and Alexei Mitrofanov. Description of Source, Moscow Interfax in English, Non-Government Information Agency known for its aggressive reporting, extensive economic coverage, and good coverage of Russia's regions. But perhaps the most exotic form of geophysical warfare concerns tampering with the electrical behavior of the ionosphere. Techniques for disturbing radio communication by punching holes in the ionosphere with nuclear explosions have been long discussed. So, too, have proposals for opening up lethal windows in the ionosphere to let in the short wavelength ultraviolet radiation which is known to damage biological systems, causing skin cancers in man and damage to crops. What is new, is the suggestion that the natural wave guide between the ionosphere and the Earth could be used to propagate very low frequency, VLF, radiation through it in such a way as to affect the electrical behavior of individuals' own brain activity. New Scientist Magazine 1976 I have spent the last three years mapping high-powered EMF sources and created a map to display my research. This database contains over 1,000 broadcast antennas and radars. Here are a few of the most powerful VLF, ELF, and ULF facilities on the planet. Very low frequency, VLF, transmitters. Awesome VLF, VTX1. South Vijayanaryanam, India, multiple broadcast frequencies, call sign, VTX1, 16300 Hz, VTX2, 17000 Hz, VTX3, 18200 Hz, VTX4, 19200 Hz. Awesome VLF, SAC, Grimeton, Sweden. Frequency, 17,200 Hz. Call sign, SAC. Locator, JO67 EK. The Grimeton VLF transmitter is a VLF transmission facility at Grimeton close to Varberg, Sweden. It has the only workable machine transmitter in the world and is classified as World Heritage Site. The transmitter was built in 1922 to 1924, to operate at 17.2 kHz, although it is designed for frequencies around 40 kHz. The radiating element is a wire aerial hung on 6 127-meter high freestanding steel pylons, that are grounded. The Grimeton VLF transmitter location is also used for shortwave transmissions, FM and TV broadcasting. For this purpose, a 260-meter high guide steel framework mast was built in 1966 next to the building containing the 40 kHz transmitter. Awesome VLF, FTA, St. Eusize, France frequency. 20,900 Hz at 400 kilowatts. Call sign, JXN. Locator, JN18GN. Awesome VLF, GQD. Skelton, UK. Frequency, 22,100 Hz. Call sign, GQD. Locator, IO84NR. BBC Skelton Broadcasting Station Locateb between Carlisle City and Penrith Town. A transmitter park used mainly for shortwave broadcasts. Many 350 kW transmitters installed in Skelton. It contains the second tallest structure in the UK, a 365 meters, 1,200 feet. Mast used to send coded messages to Royal Navy submarines. Awesome VLF, NLK. Oso Wash, Jim Greek, Washington, USA. 
frequency, 24,800 Hz at 1,200 kilowatts. Call sign, NLK. Locator, CN9080. The primary mission of this radio site is to provide VLF radio transmitting capabilities for the Pacific Submarine Fleet. Established in the 1950s, the 1.2 million watt transmitting system developed for the site remains state-of-the-art in producing low-frequency emissions worldwide. In fact it is one of the most powerful transmitters in the world. Located near Arlington, Washington, in the foothills of the Cascades, north of Seattle, the site has 5,000 largely forested acres. Awesome VLF, NA, Cutler, Maine, USA. Frequency, 24,000 Hz at 1,800 kilowatts. Locator, FN64 IP. Cutler Naval Station has a transmission power of 1,800 kilowatts, making it the most powerful VLF transmitter in the world. The transmission consists of a continuous encrypted FSK, F1B, signal at 200 board. The transmitter operates on 24.0 kilohertz. In the past it operated on 17.8 kilohertz. Awesome VLF. NWC, Northwest Cape, Exmouth, Australia. Frequency, 19,800 Hz at 2,000 kW. Locator, OG78B, Harold E. Holt Naval Station, 2 MW transmission, 1428 khz. The station features 13 tall radio towers. The tallest tower is called Tower Zero and is 387 meters, 1,270 feet, tall, and was for many years the tallest man-made structure in the Southern Hemisphere. Six towers, each 304 meters tall, are evenly placed in a hexagon around Tower Zero. The other six towers, which are each 364 meters tall, are evenly placed in a larger hexagon around Tower Zero. Extremely low frequency, ELF, transmitters U.S. Navy Project ELF, Project Sanguine, Project Seafarer. The U.S. Navy operated two extremely low frequency radio transmitters to communicate with its deep diving submarines. The sites at Clam Lake, Wisconsin and Republic, Michigan are operated by the Naval Computer and Telecommunications Area Master Station, Atlantic. The Clam Lake site, located in the Chequamegon National Forest in northern Wisconsin, is the site where testing began for ELF communications more than 30 years ago. The site has more than 28 miles of overhead signal transmission line that form part of the electrical antenna to radiate the ELF signal from the two-acre transmitting facility. The Clam Lake ELF radio station broadcasts messages to the fleet as required by the Navy Submarine Broadcast Control Authority in Norfolk, Virginia or Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. For the U.S. submarine fleet to perform its mission, it must remain silent and be undetectable. The Navy's ELF communications system is, was, the only operational communications system that can penetrate seawater to great depths and is virtually jam-proof from both natural and man-made interference. During the First Gulf War, Messages sent from ELF transmitters alerted submarine fleets in the Persian Gulf and elsewhere to military orders. While the Trident submarines could not respond and communication was limited to quick pulses of coded information, the ELF antenna could direct commanders to surface at appropriate coordinates to receive more detailed instructions via other communication technologies. Dot. A 1971 Navy study determined that electromagnetic fields associated with ELF caused stunted growth in rats. The military sat on the details of these findings until 1976, 
even as concerned citizens worked to unearth information on potential health impacts of the ELF waves. The Navy convened the Ad Hoc Committee for the Review of Biomedical and Ecological Effects of ELF Radiation to analyze their research in 1973. The committee's members raised concerns over potentially serious health problems related to the technology, though their worries carried little weight with militarists desiring a different message. The ad hoc committee's findings only reached the public once Senator Gaylord Nelson, an environmentalist and progressive Democrat, raised a stink and released the report himself. Improvements in communications technology and the changing requirements of today's Navy made the ELF communication system no longer necessary, Davis said. All communications with submarines will now be done with 12 very low-frequency transmitters located worldwide, Davis said. For years, people have been routinely arrested for trespassing in acts of civil disobedience at the 13-acre Clam Lake site. Critics have contended the system is for use during a first-strike nuclear attack became obsolete with the Cold War's end and may cause health and environmental problems. The Navy said the system was a vital communications link. Each system uses dozens of miles of above-ground antenna strung on 640-foot poles. The Navy began using the $400 million system in 1989. The annual operating costs for both ELF transmitters is $13 million, Davis said. Each site has one Navy worker and 27 civilian contractors, Davis said. Ultra-low frequency ULF, transmitter radio science is advancing so rapidly that we are unable to understand the ecological implications of a technology before a new technology replaces. The current state of the art in signaling the apocalypse is straight out of a science fiction film, with energy beams and plasma fireballs creating previously unreachable low frequencies. Such is the case in the world of space weather modification. The United States of America's military went from upper atmospheric nuclear explosions to radar heated chemical releases in the ionosphere in under 50 years. These experiments span the gamut from gathering current space weather conditions to understanding the response of our ionosphere and magnetosphere to artificial, human, influence. The military hates our unpredictable ionosphere so much they tried to replace it with an artificial ionosphere in the 1960s during Project Westford. 480 million copper dipole antennas 1.78 cm long needles, were launched into orbit and as of 2013 46 clumps of needles are still in orbit, and occasionally re-enter. 6-7. The next attempt to solve over-the-horizon radio propagation issues would come in the form of artificial mirrors made of ionospheric plasma volumes heated by ground-based microwave stations, like HARP. Using two different heating modes, HARP can produce ULF VLF from 0.001 Hz to 20 kHz. 1. Polar Electrojet Antenna Bej, A, requires an electrojet current in the D, E region, 70 negation minus 90 km negation restricted to high latitudes B, can inject frequencies up to 20 kHz. Whistlers and shear alpha waves, saw, 2. Ionospheric current drive, ICD, A, does not require electrojet B, restricted to frequencies below 70 Hz, saw, IMIC, magneto negation sonic, MERS, science advances, antennas get more powerful, and very little attention is paid to the butterfly effect. 12. These artificial resonations are adverse to the health of humans and wildlife worldwide, 13, 14, 15, and the side effects of these experiments are unknown as these facilities operate in secrecy. 
Earth is wrapped in a donut-shaped magnetic field. Circular lines of magnetic flux continuously descend into the North Pole and emerge from the South Pole. The ionosphere, an electromagnetic wave conductor, 100 kilometers, 62 miles, above the Earth, consists of a layer of electrically charged particles acting as a shield from solar winds. Earth resonant frequency natural waves are created which result from electrical activity in the atmosphere. They are thought to be caused by multiple lightning storms. Collectively, these waves are called the Schumann resonance, with the strongest current registering at 7.8 Hz. These are quasi-standing, scalar, extremely low frequency, ELF, waves that naturally exist in the Earth's electromagnetic cavity which is the space between ground and the ionosphere. These Earth brain waves are identical to the frequency spectrum of our human brain waves. Frequency nomenclature, 1 Hz equals 1 cycle per second, 1 khz equals 1000 cps, 1 mhz equals 1 million cps. Wavelength, a 1 Hz wave has a wavelength that is 186,000 miles long, a 10 Hz wave is 18,600 miles long, etc. Radio waves move at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, half the Creator designed living beings to resonate to the natural human resonance frequency pulsation in order to evolve harmoniously. The ionosphere is being manipulated by U.S. government scientists using the Alaskan transmitter called HARP, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, which sends focused radiated power to heat up sections of the ionosphere, which bounces power down again. ELF waves produced from HARP, when targeted on selected areas, can weather engineer and create mood changes affecting millions of people. The intended wattage is 1,700 billion watts of power. Geomagnetic waves and Gwen 64 elements in the ground modulate, with variation, the geomagnetic waves naturally coming from the ground. The Earth's natural brain rhythm above is balanced with these. These are the same minerals found in red blood corpuscles. There is a relation between the blood and geomagnetic waves. An imbalance between Schumann and geomagnetic waves disrupts these biorhythms. These natural geomagnetic waves are being replaced by artificially created low frequency LF, ground waves coming from Gwent Towers. Gwen, ground wave emergency network, transmitters placed 200 miles apart across the USA allow specific frequencies to be tailored to the geomagnetic field strength in each area, allowing the magnetic field to be altered. They operate in the LF range, with transmissions between LF 150 and 175 khz. They also emit waves from the upper VHF to the lower UHF range of 225 to 400 MHz. The LF signals travel by waves that hug the ground rather than radiating into the atmosphere. A Gwen station transmits in a 360 degree circle up to 300 miles, the signal dropping off sharply with distance. The entire Gwen system consists of depending on source of data, from 58 to an intended 300 transmitters spread across the USA, each with a tower 299 to 500 feet high. 300 feet copper wires in spoke-like fashion fan out from the base of the system underground, interacting with the Earth, like a thin-shelled conductor, radiating radio wave energy for very long distances through the ground, the United States is bathed in this magnetic field which can rise from ground up to 500 feet, but goes down into basements, so everyone can be affected and mind controlled. The entire artificial ground wave spreads out over the whole of the USA like a web.
it is easier to mind control and hypnotize people who are bathed in an artificial electromagnetic wave. Gwen transmitters have many different functions including, 1. Controlling the weather, 2. Mind control, 3. Behavior and mood control, and 4. Sending synthetic telepathy as infrasound to victims with US government mind control implants. Gwen works in conjunction with HARP and the Russian woodpecker transmitter, which is similar to HARP. The Russians openly market a small version of their weather engineering system called Elate, which can fine-tune weather patterns over a 200-mile area and have the same range as the Gwen unit. An Elate system operates at Moscow airport. The Gwen Towers shoot enormous bursts of energy into the atmosphere in conjunction with HARP. The website www.cuttingedge.org wrote an expose of how the major floods of the Midwest USA occurred in 1993. Atmospheric vapor rivers enormous, invisible rivers of water, consisting of vapors that flow, move towards the poles in the lower atmosphere. They rival the flow of the Amazon River and are 420 to 480 miles wide and up to 4,800 miles long. They are 1.9 miles above the Earth and contain a volume of water equivalent to 340 pounds of water per second. There are five atmospheric rivers in each hemisphere. A massive flood can be created by damming up one of these massive vapor rivers causing huge amounts of rainfall to be dumped. The Gwen Towers positioned along the areas north of the Missouri and Mississippi rivers were turned on for 40 days and 40 nights, probably mocking the flood of Genesis. This was in conjunction with HARP, that creates a river of electricity flowing thousands of miles through the sky and down to the polar ice cap, manipulating the jet stream, like the Russian woodpecker. These rivers flooded, causing agricultural losses of $12-15 billion. HARP produces earthquakes by focusing energy along fault lines. Gwen Towers are located on the fault lines and volcanic areas of the Pacific Northeast. In 1963, Dr. Robert Beck explored effects of external magnetic fields on brain waves showing a relationship between psychiatric admissions and solar magnetic storms. He exposed volunteers to pulsed magnetic fields similar to magnetic storms, and found a similar response. US 60 Hz electric power ELF waves vibrate at the same frequency as the human brain. UK 50 Hz electricity emissions depress the thyroid gland. Human vulnerability Dr. Andrea Buharich in the 50 apostrophe S slash 60s, found that clairvoyance brainwaves became 8 Hz when their psychic powers were operative. He saw an Indian yogi in 1956 controlling his brainwaves, deliberately shifting his consciousness from one level to another. Pew Harrods trained people with biofeedback to do this consciously, making 8 Hz waves. A healer made 8 Hz waves pass into a patient, healing their heart trouble, a brain emitting 8 Hz. One person emitting a certain frequency can make another also resonate to the same frequency. Our brains are extremely vulnerable to any technology which sends out ELF waves because they immediately start resonating to the outside signal by a kind of tuning fork effect. Pew Harich experimented discovering that a 7.83 Hz, Earth's pulse rate, made a person feel good, producing an altered state. B10.80 Hz causes riotous behavior and C6.6 Hz causes depression. Pew Harich made ELF waves change RNA and DNA, breaking hydrogen bonds to make a person have a higher vibratory rate. He wanted to go beyond the psychic 8 Hz brainwave and attract psi phenomena. James Huttack, who once worked for Pew Harridge, also wrote in his book The Keys of Enoch that ultraviolet caused hydrogen bonds to break and this raised the vibratory rate. 
Pugh Harwich presented the mental effects of ELF waves to military leaders, but they would not believe him. He gave this information to certain dignitaries of other Western nations. The US government burned down his home in New York to shut him up and he fled to Mexico. However, the Russians discovered which ELF frequencies did what to the human brain and began zapping the US Embassy in Moscow on 4 July 1976 with electromagnetic waves, varying the signal, including focusing on 10 Hz. 10 Hz puts people into a hypnotic state. Russians and North Koreans use this in portable mind control machines to extract confessions. A machine was even found in an American church to help the congregation believe. The Russian woodpecker signal was traveling across the world from a transmitter near Kiev. The US Air Force identified five different frequencies in this compound harmonic woodpecker signal that was sending signals through the earth and the atmosphere. Nikola Tesla revealed in 1901 power could be transmitted through the ground using ELF waves. Nothing stops or weakens these signals. The Russians retrieved Tesla's papers when they were finally returned to Yugoslavia after his death. Pugh Harich continued to monitor the Russian ELF wave signal while in Mexico and the higher harmonics produced in the MHZ range. 5.340 MHz. He met the CIA and started working for them. He and Dr. Robert Beck designed equipment to measure these waves and their effect on the human brain. Pugh Harwich started his work by putting dogs to sleep. By 1948-49 he graduated to monkeys, deliberately destroying their eardrums to enable them to pick up sounds without the eardrum intact. He discovered a nerve in the tongue could be used to facilitate hearing. He created the dental tooth implant which mind control victims are now claiming was surreptitiously placed in their mouth by controlled dentists causing them to hear voices in their head. The implant was placed under dental caps or lodged in their jaw. Vaccine implants implants are now smaller than a hair's width and are injected with vaccine and flu shots millions have had this done unknowingly. These biochips circulate in the bloodstream and lodge in the brain, enabling the victims to hear voices via the implant. There are many kinds of implants now and 1 in 40 are victims from alien abduction statistics, though 1 in 20 has also been gauged. The fake alien abduction event revealed to be actually the work of U.S. military personnel using technology to make hologram spaceships outside, virtual reality scenarios of going onto a spaceship with humans in costumes, has been astutely perceived. Though real alien abductions do occur, the alien abduction scenario has been useful to stop any further investigation or accountability of government authorities by poor victims who would face mockery and appear silly. Are we being forced to respond to an artificially induced vibratory rate by global masters who want this planet to have a sudden leap in evolution? populated by the psychically aware and therefore a superior class of humans or is the agenda designed to eliminate billions of people who are useless eaters, deceptively being disposed by electromagnetically induced cancers and diseases? Electromagnetic disease transmission ELF, and chemtrails The physics and engineering behind electromagnetic disease transmission are frightening. Diseases can be reproduced as disease signatures in that the vibration of a disease can be manufactured and sent on to be induced. The brainwave pattern of hallucinogenic drugs can also be copied and sent by ELF waves to induce visions. Once diseases are sprayed in the air, electromagnetic waves attuned to the disease, using harmonics and subharmonics will make them more lethal and infectious by sending particular disease frequency death patterns. Chemtrails are being sprayed daily all over USA, and other countries too, in a white crisscross pattern. They contain diseases and chemicals which affect our state of consciousness. 
They can produce apathy which works in conjunction with fluoridation of the water, as well as aspartame and drugs. Fluoride disables the willpower section of the brain, impairing the left occipital lobe. Fluoride and selenium enable people to hear voices. ELF waves create disturbances in the biological processes of the body and these can be activated in the population once the diseases are introduced into the body from the chemtrails. Some chemtrails have been analyzed and shown to be creating cleavages in spatial perceptions, blocking the interaction of various amino acids that relate to higher consciousness and to increased dopamine in the brain producing a listless spaced out state of lower reactive mind. Basically, the goal is to fog the difference between the real and unreal and some of this could be connected with the many UFO abductions occurring en masse. Hundreds have been witnessed laid out on tables and implanted. Intelligence agencies are in league with each other behind this disablement of the masses to such a point that they can't even fight back. In order for the perpetrators to do what they want, they need the overall frequency of each victim to function at a specific rate below the threshold of awareness. Could this be part of a greater plan with mind control transmitters covering the whole of USA and England, cleverly disguised as cell phone towers and trees? The power from microwave towers may be turned up to such a level that people can die. A brain functioning at beta level, above 13 Hz, is agitated and can't change its perceptions, if it is artificially maintained by technology to that frequency. This may increase body electricity in others, giving them psychic powers. Is this linked to the New Age's claim of a rising 12 to 14 Hz human resonance, inching us towards the fourth dimension? Stimulants ingested globally from caffeine genetically modified plants, may also produce an impact on the global brain in the ionosphere collecting our brain waves. New Age channelers say we are going into fourth dimensional frequency. They heard the voice of some ET who told them. However, some ETs may be local boys. Voices in the head were produced in prisoners in Utah prisons using Tesla technology. Each of the prisoners received the same message from an ET. Today, it seems, it's easy to produce voices in the head without implants. A prisoner called David Fratters in Draper Prison, Utah in 1988 wrote, I began to receive, or hear, high frequency tones in my ears. When I plug my ears dot dot the tones are still inside and become amplified. It's as if they had become electrified echo chambers with the sounds coming from the inside out dot dot I began to hear voices dot dot into my inner ears as vivid as though I were listening to a set of stereo headphones dot dot with the end result being that I am now having my brain monitored by an omnipotent computerized mind reading or scanning machine of some sort. Hundreds of inmates at the Gunnison facility of the Utah State Prison, and the State Hospital were subject to this brand of mind control in order to test it. In the early 1970s, this was brought out in the Utah U.S. District Court, because inmates who had been subjected to this Tesla wave mind control in prison had tried unsuccessfully to fight back in court. The University of Utah researched how Tesla waves could be used to manipulate the mind into hearing voices, overriding and implanting thoughts into the mind, and reading the thoughts, as well as developing eye implants. Tracking Cray computers, using artificial intelligence, monitor the victims of government implants sending pre-recorded sound bites or occasional live messages. They are picked up by satellite and relayed to whatever large TV broadcasting antenna, Gwen Tower or other microwave antenna is near the victim. It's believed that some type of body implants pick up the signal and broadcast the correct Tesla wave pattern to create voices within the victim. The tracking implant keeps the staff and the satellite system informed every few minutes as to exactly where to send the voice signals. 
the master computer and central HQ for this is reported to be in Boulder, CO. It is thought that transponders are being made there as well. The central cellular computer is in the Boulder, CO National Bureau of Standards Building. AT&T is also cooperating in this project. Several government agencies work together on this. Tim Rafat of UK wrote that this intercerebral hearing is used to drive the victim mad, as no one else can hear the voices transmitted into the brain of the target. Transmission of auditory data directly into the target's brains using microwave carrier beams is now common practice. Instead of using excitation potentials, one uses a transducer to modify the spoken word into ELF audiograms, that are then superimposed on a pulse-modulated microwave beam. The Sydney Morning Herald on 21 March 1983 published an article by Dr. Nassim Abdelaziz Nuaji, assistant professor in the Faculty of Agriculture, Moshtehatuk Kalubia, Egypt. It stated, Russian satellites, controlled by advanced computers, can send voices in one's own language interweaving into natural thoughts to the population of choice to form diffused artificial thought. The chemistry and electricity of the human brain can be manipulated by satellite and even suicide can be induced. Through ferocious anti-humanitarian means, the extremist groups are fabricated. The troubles and bloody disturbances are instigated by advanced tell means via Russian satellites. In many countries in Asia, Africa, Europe and Latin America, another source says that these have been fed with the world's languages and synthetic telepathy will reach into people's heads making people believe God is speaking to them personally to enact the second coming, complete with holograms. The Russians broke the genetic code of the human brain. They worked out 23 band wavelengths, 11 of which were totally independent. So if you can manipulate those 11, you can do anything. NSA Cray computers can remotely track people just knowing the specific EMF waves, evoked potentials from eggs in the 30 to 50 Hz, 5 mW range of a person's bioelectric field. Each person's emissions are unique and they can remotely track someone in public. Maxwell's hidden etheric component. Evoked potentials officially don't exist in physics, but in 1873 a Scotsman, James Clark Maxwell, discovered electromagnetic waves have three components. He discovered waveforms, which exist at a certain number of right-angled rotations away from the electromagnetic field. These are hyperspartial components, not subject to constraints of time and space. He claimed that electromagnetic radiation waves were carried by the ether and the ether was disturbed by magnetic lines of force. The hidden component is called only potential now and not normally used except for covert hyperdimensional physics and to manipulate consciousness itself via electromagnetic waves covering vast areas of the planet. Approximately one person in 3000 is naturally sensitive to this magnetic waveform component, the telepathic types, according to a writer called Magix. But we are all capable of tuning into this magnetic component by tuning our subconscious to it. Maxwell's successors thought potentials broke into mysticism, because they believed fields contain mass which cannot be created from apparently nothing, which is what potentials are, both literally and mathematically. They are an accumulation or reservoir of energy, but this hasn't been taught in mainstream physics. Thought controls subliminal words in the correct electromagnetic field that expresses human consciousness, attuned to the human brain, can enter our minds at a subconscious level. Our brain activity patterns can apparently be measured and stored on computer by supercomputers. If a victim needs subliminal thoughts implanted, all that is necessary is to capture, save on computer, 
and target the person's brainwave pattern to send them such low-frequency subliminal messages that they actually think it is their own thoughts, confirmed by Al Bielek and Preston Nichols with the Montauk Project in Long Island. The researcher Magix says our brains are so sensitive that they are like liquid crystal in response to the magnetic component of the Earth. We are sensitive to Earth's magnetic changes, changes in the ionospheric cavity and re-resonate those frequencies ourselves. We are incredibly complex, beyond comprehension and a type of biocosmic transducer, he adds. Physicists in Russia correlate the mean annual magnetic activity, electromagnetic and electrostatic fields on human behavior and medical indications. They are similar to biorhythms. These magnetic frequencies can be manipulated. Our brain waves can mimic magnetic frequencies from very simple equipment at extremely low power levels. From half a second to four seconds later, the neurons and brain waves are driven exclusively by the device, with power levels almost non-existent. All one needs is a circularly polarized antenna aimed up at the ionospheric cavity and they can manipulate the moods of everyone within a 75 square mile area. The body picks up these new manipulated waves and begins to correspond immediately. Sleep frequency will make everyone become tired and sleep. In 1967, an internationally renowned scientist and Christopher Hills, a pendulum expert, communicated with some ETs. It is not known who the scientist was, but at one time both Hills and Pew Harich were with the medium Eileen Garrett at a time when Pew Harich was communicating with ETs. In short, ETs communicated with us via modulated radio waves, between 10,000 and 20,000 cycles below the known electromagnetic spectrum. In the carrier wave by amplitude modulation, mixed with frequency modulation, single band energy, transmission power less than 25 watts, a naturally present wave on Earth, the brain modulated, a wave that resonates between the Earth and the ionosphere. All humans influence the ionosphere in this manner. A reflecting technique is involved. The brain modulation consisted of pulses, akin to those known from neuropulses. Two humans can use this. It's related to something akin to low-frequency radar and to ultrasonic techniques, but qualified a mixed electroacoustic wave function. The electromagnetic wave induced an ultrasonic transduction in human tissue. The brain radiation has a sonic component to it as well as an electromagnetic component. Electromagnetic radiation has a sonic component and it's dependent on the medium through which it travels. The scientist cut through months of work. Now Harp is slicing up the ionosphere. The world brain, like a microwave knife, producing long tear incisions destroying the membrane which holds the reservoir of data accumulated by all Earth's history. A healer called Mr. Acclaim to receive ancient wisdom from this protective magnetic ring of energy which stores within it all knowledge since time began. Ruth Montgomery wrote about him in Born to Heal. He claimed that if our energy flow is cut off from this magnetic field, the universal supply is obstructed and we are no longer in tune and start to get sick. The power from this travels in split seconds around the world and is available to anyone who is capable of receiving it and handling it. The waves from the ring automatically translated into words in his mind, as wisdom to diagnose and heal others coming from the storehouse of knowledge here since the beginning of time. He produced instant miracles, knitting broken bones and removing arthritis. A photo caught forked lightning coming from his fingers. In Let's Talk Montauk, Joyce Murphy shows that experiments on the 410 to 420 MHz cycle have been done which could affect the window frequency to the human consciousness as a whole. He, Preston Nichols, 
used his dot dot radio equipment to learn that whenever a 410 to 420 megahertz signal appeared on the air, the psychic's minds would be jammed. Tracing the signal to Montauk Point and the red and white radar antenna on the Air Force Base. In encounter in the Pleiades by Peter Moon and Preston Nichols, http colon slash slash www.timetravel.com slash skybooks slash Preston wrote that. Dr. Nicholas Bigish has picked up 435 megahertz signals connected to HARP and that a mind control function is being employed. He says that 400 to 450 megahertz is the window to human consciousness because it is our reality's background frequency. Tim Rafat wrote in his Microwave Mind Control in the UK article Brazil Boycott Org that cellular phones use 435 megahertz. UK police use 450 megahertz exclusively. Dr. Rossidy used this for CIA behavioral modification experiments. Police have a vast array of antennae to broadcast this frequency all over the UK. ADA used 0.75 milliwatts slash CM2 intensity or pulse modulate microwave at a frequency of 450 megahertz, with an ELF modulation to control all aspects of human behavior. 450 MHZ radar modulated at 60 Hz greatly reduced T lymphocyte activity to kill cultured cancer cells. A study of USA 60 Hz power lines repeated this finding. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel.